theory was one which was fairly well uh, ensconced in the minds of most of us. Um, certainly that's what we were telling soldiers. S70A9 Blackhawk is a potent machine, fast, maneuverable, and capable of delivering a significant payload to forward areas in all weathers, day and night. Sophisticated technology, but any piece of equipment is only as good as the people who operate it. And in the case of the Blackhawk, that means a crew of four, two pilots and two loadmasters, specialists, professionals. It was the day of graduation, therefore they had to uh, appear in roll call at some ungodly hour of the morning, but I didn't want them in any good gear because they needed that for the parade that day for the governor. So I said it was m mufti. I didn't even think of the word, actually. But they queried and said, well, what is mufti? I said, you can come dressed in anything except your pyjamas and you can't come naked. So I attended in civvies. And these cadets, almost to a man, came out in a blues cap, winter underwear consisting of long johns and polished boots and black gaiters. And to a man, except for one or two people, they were dressed identically. And I got the shock of my life when I saw them. Success in battle is influenced by the knowledge of weapon systems and its application against an enemy force. The night demonstration will display how weapon systems can effectively be applied at night with support from battlefield illumination systems.
Good evening. Making news tonight, thousands gathered at Melbourne's St Paul's Cathedral today for the funeral of motor racing champion Peter Brock. Friends paid tribute to Brock, who died in a rally in Western Australia. He was described as a man who'd risen from humble beginnings to the pinnacle of his sport. And the memorial service for Steve Irwin will take place at his Australia Zoo in Queensland tomorrow. 5,000 people have tickets for the event and it'll be broadcast live on the ABC at 8.30am Central Standard Time. The Territory Government has given final approval for what could turn into a multi-million dollar uranium mine. The Browns Oxide project will initially mine copper, cobalt and nickel and is expected to start production next year. Jake Kovko's widow is rejecting apologies from the military. Shelley Kovko told the Board of Inquiry that sorry doesn't cut it after the first mistake. She believes the private's death was a tragic accident but isn't expecting the inquiry will reveal how it happened. And a security scare at the family law court in Darwin turned out to be a false alarm. Hundreds of people were evacuated from three buildings on Mitchell Street in the CBD in response to a suspicious package. And you can join me at 7 o'clock for all of the day's news in detail.